Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Saturday, February 25th, 2012, and this is a quick update from the garage. Someone on YouTube posted a comment to the message board on one of my videos that I should probably look at building something called a rocket mass, a rocket stove mass heater for my garage because uh, he thought it was a good idea. And um, I did a little bit of research, um, which landed me at a YouTube channel called Paul Wheaton 12 and his website and his forum permies.com and I just got completely engrossed in it and uh, decided yep this looks like a fairly simple project to build uh, I'm gonna give this a try so uh, I'm gonna post all of the links to the source material in the comment section below. If you uh, would like any further information, please visit those links. But this is the basic diagram of a rocket mass or a rocket stove mass heater. You have a fuel hopper that's vertical in which you place uh, smooth sticks that uh, are gravity fed to the bottom of the chamber. Uh, the fire burns at the bottom horizontally across the burn tunnel. The uh, the flame is super hot through the uh, through the stack that is insulated all the way up to the top of the barrel, which covers the whole assembly. There's a uh, plasma reburn that occurs inside the inside the uh, the stack, and then once it reaches the outer drum, it be immediately begins to cool and settle down out the out the exhaust. A rocket stove mass heater uses a large uh, thermal mass to store heat so that the uh, the heat is given off evenly over the course of an evening or may even over the course of a couple of days. In my case I won't be using the large mass battery or the large heat battery I should say. Um, I will simply be reclaiming any additional on, um, any additional heat that would normally go out the exhaust in the form of a heat exchanger on the exhaust on the exhaust pipe. So I headed off to Home Depot and started shopping for cinder blocks and bricks. Uh, this is what is the normal building material used for the uh, construction of the fuel hopper and the, the uh, burn tunnel with the, the base for the, uh, the chimney stack. And um, I found some very nice evenly molded concrete blocks or concrete bricks that uh, fit together very nicely and uh, it looks as though um, I will be able to put this entire project together without mortar and simply backfill around the outside with uh, with perm permalite or perlite yeah perlite and uh, perlite and clay for the insulator and then sand on the outside of that to complete the uh, enclosure for the burn chamber so this is a look at um, the shopping cart uh, after I had thrown a few bricks together and I said alright I've, I've got enough bricks I bought I bought uh, these bricks plus a few extra just for good measure to make sure that I had enough and I brought them home and started putting to putting them together on my bench this is the the basic layout for the uh, the burn tunnel and you'll notice that one brick at the bottom in the center is just um, maybe about three eighths of an inch too long so I'm going to shave where you see that marked off. I'm going to shave that off with a masonry blade for my circular saw so that the two bricks on the right can come all the way up and butt against the bricks that are standing on end at the back. That way there will be no gaps in that section. In this photo you see two more bricks laid on top that are now forming the bottom of the burn tunnel and the section where I have it marked off with an X that will be actually removed as well so that all that will remain is the full brick on the left and the small section of the brick on the right the uh, the reason for removing that is what it will do is it will create a little chamber at the bottom of the stack so that it can collect ash without restricting any flow it will uh, should it should increase the amount of time between cleanings for the for the ash uh, the ash build up inside the stove. Here you see I've begun to to um, cover up the burn tunnel 
and again you see the section of brick that will be removed so those two vertical bricks that are standing on end to the extreme right those will actually come all the way up to the brick at the back that's also standing on end and that that large gap that you see at the very back will not exist the design that I intend to use is a smaller scaled down version of some of the designs that I have seen on YouTube. Uh, most of the designs that I've seen on YouTube use a 6 inch inside diameter stack. Mine will use a 4 inch inside diameter stack. Um, what's important is that you take into consideration the cross-sectional area of the stack of the uh, of the stove so that all other components built for the stove roughly match that same cross-sectional area with the exception of the horizontal burn tunnel. You actually want that to be a, just a little bit smaller cross-sectional area than the cross-sectional area of the vertical stack. So in this photo here you see I have a, a, a cross-sectional height of 3 and 1 8 inches and in this section here uh, I've got uh, a little over three and five eighths, probably three and eleven sixteenths horizontal width, and that is a cross sectional area of just under eleven inches. The cross sectional area of a four inch diameter round pipe is twelve point eight. So this should actually be a pretty rockety stove. Here you see now I've built up the uh the bricks standing on end and the way I have these bricks stacked they are perfectly flush with the bricks that cover the top of the burn tunnel. In the finished stove I may or may not use the bricks that you see here on edge around the opening of the fuel hopper because the uh, that, that makes the opening a little bit too tall. I think I may just use a, uh, a piece of um, a clay squared off tube at the top there Here's a look down inside. Again, I might rearrange this so that the opening of the fuel hopper matches the opening of the uh, of the inlet at the at the bottom there. And here's a look at some bricks that have been laid around the opening of the uh, stack at the base of the stack, so that the not only can the stack rest on top of it, but so can the barrel that will sit on top of that. The only thing I need to work out from this point is how I am going to exhaust the, uh, the the gases at the bottom of the barrel to exit the, the back side of the stove. And now for your enjoyment, here's a time-lapse clip of the assembly of the, the bricks as I have put them together for my project. Keep, keep in mind that there is a very specific reason that I did stack them the way that I did to get the dimensions that I need. Every project will be different. However you decide to, uh, to build your project, you just need to keep in mind the, uh, the basic parameters for the build and the, and the, uh, the various um, ratios of the dimensions when you're stacking your bricks together. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. 